Hi, my name is Keith Cooper of North Light Images and um, in a recent video uh, I looked at a black and white picture of a burnt tree which I'd taken on Mesa Verde in Colorado quite a few years ago and went through the print that I'd made, some details of it. This is looking at some of the other photos I took that day that I mentioned in that video and that I thought I'd have a go at producing big prints on the Canon TC20M that I've got here at the moment for testing. Now, I, before Canon reminds me again, the TC20M is intended for CAD use, poster printing, etc. It is not intended as a photo printer. However, it's a 24 inch printer. It takes roll paper, it takes sheet paper as well, but roll paper, albeit limited to two inch core rolls, I've got a roll of a fairly heavy uh, photo paper in this. Now this is one that I got from Dupli um, here in Leicester that I've, I've used for some testing. Um, and it's 24 inch roll paper. As you can see, I've been producing some pictures, but to step back a bit, the picture I showed yesterday, the black and white one, was a picture taken with a Canon 1DS. That's 11 megapixel full frame. And it was, I processed it, I printed it several years ago, black and white, that's it. In looking at the pictures when I was doing this video the other day, um, I noticed quite a few other pictures that I'd taken on the same day. Uh, the weather was quite changeable. So I had a look at some of the other images and thought, well, let's have a go at making some prints and see what they look like. Now, the first image I started off with was uh, this one here, taken from fairly high up, as I say, near where I took the other, other picture. There's a burnt tree on this one as well. There'd obviously been a forest fire, perhaps the previous season or something. This was around about April time. So there's still snow on the ground. I say, this is about 9,000 feet. So it was, it was a cold day up here and there were storms coming in. It did brighten up a bit. You can see the picture here, there was a brief bit of sun there and some bits of blue sky. His first picture I thought of doing a print of. Now I've opened up the file in Adobe Camera Raw. Now I use Photoshop this. Now I'm going to go through some of the stages, some of the things I did, but I'm not going to go through it in a detailed screen recording, shot by shot, step by step route. There are plenty of tutorials on processing images that take that approach. What I want to uh, convey here is some of the principles of what I was doing and why I was doing it. Now, with most things with Photoshop, and I dismiss Lightroom for this sort of stuff, anything for making big prints like this, um, I would always go for Photoshop because of the control it gives me, particularly the use of layers, which I'll come back to. But that's an integral part of my photo editing process. Here's the image opened up in the first one opened up in Camera Raw. Well, you know, it's it's a, a moderately well exposed image. There's no burnt out bits, which is a bit I was keen to avoid. Um, it would have been nice if there had been a bit of sun on it brightening up, but I can change the tonal contrast of this. There's quite a lot of variation, but the composition, the colour, I'm generally fairly happy with that one. So I'm thinking that's okay. What have I done in, in Photoshop in the raw processing? Very little. I've turned down image sharpening. I've used corrections to, to fix uh, chromatic aberration because I checked looking at this picture here and this picture was taken using the Canon EF 16 to 35 f 2.8 L lens. This is the original 1635 and it's renowned as being not that soft. In fact, I got rid of it when I got my Canon 1DS Mark III, 21 megapixels. Um, I found that it, it just had too much softness. This particular shot looks okay at this size and in fact would make an excellent A4 print probably with a bit of sharpening and processing. But once I started working on it, and um, I cropped it as, a bit as well. I wanted a slightly, I wanted to reduce the prominence of the foreground here. Um, I've cropped it to concentrate more on the key elements here. Um, I'm looking at printing this on 24 inch paper. So this is going to be a perhaps 22 inch by 
36, 38 inch print. So I'm going to have to do a bit of work on this. Now, no problem with that. Um, I've got quite a few articles and videos looking at resizing, um, particularly using the likes of uh, Topaz Sharpen AI and Topaz Gigapixel AI. The sharpening is sometimes needed before the rescaling. Just a little bit of sharpening of the image before you do the rescaling, if it's done correctly, and you may need to experiment here, will give you better results in the enlarged image. Too much sharpening will produce artifacts, which Topa uh, Gigapixel AI will then exaggerate. So it's a balancing act, and I found it varies for every single picture I do. So it does need a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of experience in, in, practice, in practice with the software there. Now, there are other ways of resizing. There are other ways of sharpening. Um, there are a multitude of approaches you can get to to get to yourself to a final print. But I'm just using these two because I know they work on images from the 1DS very well. Um, as I've got a video looking at it, an article looking at it, it goes into much more detail about the differences between amounts of sharpening. Um, and you could use other sharpening for it. Um, I turn down, I keep some color noise reduction in the processing here. Because remember, this is a 2003 camera the shots are in 2005, but it's a 2003 camera, so it's it's you know performance is going to be lacking compared to modern things. But there's the image I've decided great. I quite like that. I like that slightly wider look. Um, I've corrected for a chromatic aberration in Adobe Camera Raw, and I think well right we'll we'll do some we'll do some sharpening. And it's at this point, and um, this is a screenshot from uh, the Sharpen AI. And at this point, it's picked up. I've let it choose its automatic uh, mode for um, for selecting sharpening algorithms. Worth experimenting with that as well. But I know that quite a lot of distortions in wide angle lenses towards the periphery of the field tend to be better suited to using the camera shake. Uh, fix rather necessary than the than the basic softness. It's because of the difference between uh, radial and tangential distortions that you get in lenses towards the corners. Um, but different lenses, different solutions. So like all of these things, there is no step-by-step -step recipe guide. If you are somebody who likes following recipes, I'm afraid you're going to be greatly disappointed by almost all my descriptions and tutorials I ever write because I very rarely take that approach. Um, I'm afraid you have to make the effort to understand what you're doing and why you're doing. Knowing what you're doing, why you're doing helps to have an objective somewhere. Now, to me, the objective is a big print. So I have some knowledge there what I want to do. But Looking at this particular image here, I can see that yes, Sharpen AI works nicely on sharpening it, but it's having difficulty. Now, I tried resampling this image up, and in resampling it, um, the original image was um, an A4 image at 300 pixels per inch or there, thereabouts. Um, so it's had quite a lot of enlargement to take it up to this side. This one's not cropped, by the way. Um, in that much enlargement, you're going if you, you're going to potentially have problems with the uh, with what the image has in its original source. Now, this sort of distortion here, uh, or, or lack of just after a, I've processed it, can easily generate artifacts. Now, this means that you have to go through the image afterwards. Now, as I said, this was bad A4 or the or A4 letter at. 300 pixels per inch. I've resized it, and I did did this one for here as well. And I've, this is the image that this one is from. But in resizing, I've resized it to 450 because pixels per inch, because I found that most modern printer drivers benefit from higher detail, and even using higher detail generated by gigapixel AI, that extra detail helps in sharpening the image because you get a natural softening when you print anyway. So I'm looking at enlarging quite a bit more. I'm not enlarging up to 300, I'm enlarging up to 450. 
Um, I have in the past for some images enlarged up to 600 because that extra detail does feed through into fine detail. Now I haven't done an, a detailed assessment of how the printer driver for the TC20M handles fine detail, but my experience with Canon drivers, Epson drivers on other printers is that having more detail sent to the, sent to the um, uh, printer driver does help. The idea that you need um, integral numbers, parts of, of some magic printer number is years out of date. I've demolished that one to my satisfaction elsewhere. Um, I could send this at 458 pixels per inch. Um, that would be fine. 449 would be fine. It makes no benefit going to 450 uh, uh, as opposed to, uh, it's just convenience in, in resizing the image here. So I've looked at this image and much as I like the image, and this is before I've done anything with the tonality of it, uh, um, everything here, there's no clipping blacks, no clipping whites, it's for help. Everything there would be a great print. Unfortunately, there's just not enough image, de fine image detail for a print this size. An A3 print, or an A3 plus print, I could almost certainly get a, an acceptably sharp looking, good looking print. Now, if you're one of those people who insist on looking at their prints with a hand lens, you're going to find issues and things with it. You're certainly going to find issues in ones that taken up to this size. But I'm always reminded that in the real world, nobody ever looks at pictures like that. So it's nowhere near the problem that some would like to think it is. So that's the picture there that I would like to have printed. Mm, unfortunately, just not good enough. Um, you know, I can do all kinds of things, but at the moment, getting fine detail out of this particular image because of the lens that was used, maybe the settings, who knows? But because of that, this image, I cannot take up to a huge size. Now, with a newer camera, certainly my 5DS at 50 megapixel, and absolutely certainly I would hope with a GFX 100S, um, I could get but I didn't have those. I've got what I want to work with. And, you know, it's an important thing there. Great getting a new camera, but don't forget all your old stuff that might be in your archives. You might have changed how you think about pictures. You might look at things in a slightly different way than you did. This is nearly 20 years ago. A lot has changed in nearly 20 years. But, you know, these are two views here that I like. Now, this one here, yeah, I'll just go past that here. This is the image here, opened up, JPEG of it. This is when I opened it up in Camera Raw. Once again, I've not done much to it. I've just made sure the color balance is okay. Now I have to be a little bit careful here because I'm printing on a glossy paper here and this will tend to exacerbate the uh, with this particular ink set. Even though it's calibrated and everything, the paper is a bluey white paper, it's got optical brightness in it. Now that's going to make the light, the blues, the, the distant parts of this show up a bit more. So I'll come back to that when I go some of the processing of this. But there's the image, I've adjusted it. I've added in a little bit of clarity adjustment to bring up the structure, because it's a print. I've done a few bits and pieces with this that, yeah, I've just altered the tonality ever so slightly, not changed the white balance really. It was fine from the image. It was no great problems. I've upped the saturation and the vibrance a bit because I'm going to make a print. Um, for something like this that looks great on a screen, when you print it can look a bit flat. Now I'll come back to some of the adjustments and things that I've done after, after this. But there's my image that I'm going to take. Now, what have I done to that image? First of all, I've run a sharpening on it, a very light sharpening, but I've used Sharpener AI. Now you could use other ones, but I've used Sharpener AI because it's brought up some of the structure in some of the nearer trees in this. And there's always interesting looking at an image like this when you look at the scale of it. You look at these little green dots here, they're full-size trees, um, and you tend to not think of that for it, but you know, it's just the sheer scale of it. So I've done a bit of sharpening. I've then saved that image as a 16-bit TIFF file. I've run the 16-bit TIFF file through Gigapixel AI. 
I've resized it to uh, 22 inch by, what was it, 20, 3 to 2 ratio. So it's 22 inches here. I can't remember the length of it, of that bit, yeah, 34 or something like that. Um, so anyway, 22 by 33, that'll be it, yeah. But anyway, uh, 450 pixels per inch. So I've resized it and I've done that with it. So I've now got a much bigger image by being very careful with the settings. Once again, no noise reduction. I'm happy to keep what Gigapixel AI thinks is noise in the image here. So I've just gone for resizing. I've turned down the sharpening quite a bit and I've produced a nice big file which I can print. Now, what am I gonna do for this before I print it? Well, first of all, and I'll, I'm not show, although I've I've got some screenshots here, they simply won't show on the video. So what I've done is I've got a profile, an ICC profile for this paper on the printer there. And I've made sure that um, I've done a soft proof. Now, I'm, I only do soft proofing when I tend to think there may be some issues potentially. Now, in looking at this file and I've, I'm working in the pro photo color space here to make sure at 16 bit, so everything's in it. I did a gamut check to have a look at what's out of gamut in this image for that printer with this paper and those inks. And it turns out that apart from a few tiny deep shadowed specks of dark green color somewhere in the trees that no one's ever gonna notice, this image is almost entirely in gamut for this printer. Now, that doesn't mean that if I printed it on a better printer, a photo printer, such as the P5000 here, I wouldn't get a better dynamic range from the paper. I wouldn't get slightly blacker blacks, which I know I'll get blacker blacks from looking at the profiling data. I might get, you know, the brighter colors not gonna make much difference. Where the inks would make a difference with the big P5000 here on doing that is that I would have better smoothness. But I've got no particularly awkward gradients or anything here. This is a picture that really, apart from the blacker blacks, so giving a, a bit more contrast, a little bit better depth for that printer, it's not actually that much benefit. Now, if there was masses of fine detail, if this was a 100 megapixel image and I was looking at masses of fine detail, I'd find almost certainly that the quality of fine detail in this, if I got my hand lens out, was better printed off this than it was that. But they're two very different printers, so I am in no way comparing them other than to say that given the choice, I would use this. But then that's a 17 inch printer and that's a 24 inch printer, so what do you want? If you're printing posters, this may well be good enough. So I've got my image here. What am I gonna do when I look at it in the soft proof? When I do the soft proof, I notice it looks a bit flat. I put the paper color adjustment on the soft proofing just to have a quick look. Can't always rely on it. It overdoes the lightness, blueness of the paper. But it does tell me that this image will possibly tend a little bit to the sort of bluish when you look at it in normal lighting. So. I've taken a new vibrance and, and uh, saturation adjustment layer and I've upped the saturation a little bit and the vibrance a little bit. Because it's a layer, I don't have to apply that to all the image. So I've basically upped, I want to make the closer parts of the image of greater contrast, more color than the more distant parts of the image, which will be flatter atmospheric perspective. So it's gotta be brighter here. Now, the reason I do this in Photoshop a lot is because I can do it in layers. So I effectively put in an adjustment, crank the color up a bit, and then using the layer on the mask, just paint that in a little bit. So it just applies, I get more saturation in this bit here of the image. So that's quite a subtle effect. What else might I do just to do? There are a few, few little tweaks on this. I really want this close rocky outcrop here to stand out a bit more. So once again, another adjustment layer. I've just increased with a curve 
increase the contrast so you just change the curve a little bit because that makes the rest of the image look not so good but I don't care about that I'm just one wanting to adjust this bit here now I have once again my adjustment layer the curve which makes this look better but makes all this look worse so I go to the mask make the mask go black so it, the effect is washed out and then I just paint in lightly the effect in this area here so I bring up the contrast of this of this nearby rock outcrop but then I think well okay I'm pretty much there uh, it looks okay um, certainly it's going to print and this is when I send it to the printer now I've got, I've got a video I, I recorded when I when I printed these and you see it takes a process probably it took about 10-12 minutes I think to print now I'm not going to show the entire print process here so I'll jump forward a little bit but the print comes out and after ooh, I think it was 11 minutes it took to print uh, this size I get the print drop into the capture tray there we go um, this is worth using the capture tray because it's much better that the print drops into the capture tray than rolls on the floor uh, it's cut and there we go and I've got the print and that is this print here here we are with the with the print you will notice there's there's two prints the use of gigapixel ai and sharpener beforehand has produced enough sharp added in with when i was doing the raw processing just a little bit of clarity has produced an image that certainly on the screen looks broadly acceptable to print looking at the print yeah it looks good now I've just got my medium computer distance glasses so I can't really focus too close but there is masses of detail in this now if I put on a second pair of glasses or my really strong ones so I can actually look in detail I see that some of the edges some of the contrast locally is not quite enough so for some of the uh, rocks here it then there's not enough contrast they should be slightly crisper it should be a bit more pop now this varies when you're printing certainly um, if I'm printing on a luster paper like this I can get away with cranking up the contrast a little bit on an art paper this image as I've printed it here would print very well on an art paper you would not get strong high contrasts but actually it doesn't matter for an image like this now this particular image I know I printed on the equivalent of Epson ultra smooth fine art a few years ago a color image of this and it looked great here I've got I can't remember obviously I didn't have the same software so I had to go for slightly more involved process to get there but um, I ended up getting prints you know slightly smaller than this if I remember rightly but you know it's a nice looking picture it looks good on the wall you could say well nobody's going to get that close to it to have a look and spot the lack of detail this is on the limit where I start to notice it myself and if I notice it it means picky people will notice it a treat I remind you this is an 11 megapixel image so what were you expecting but anyway there is the let's just hold that up and hopefully that won't get any reflections off it and it's a very nice looking image okay why have I got another one underneath here let's put this one down carefully what's different about this image well I took the image here and ran this through Nick Sharpner Pro now Nick Sharpner Pro is my software I've got loads of reviews of it on the Northlight Images website I have used this for years with Nick Sharpner Pro I've turned the amount of actual print sharpening right down so it's down at 5% or something like that because I don't want any more finer detail however I have turned up the structure a little bit on it now this makes up for some of the flatness the lack of uh, contrast you get in prints compared to viewing stuff on the screen and in this instance this is now a version that's been had a run through Nick Sharpner Pro so in terms of sort of fancy software that I've used on this I've used obviously I've used 
camera raw to process the raw file vastly better than I would have got from when I originally did this years ago when I first got the image in 2005. So I've got a better result to start with. I'm working in 16-bit in the pro photo color space just to make sure we've got plenty of room to do things. Now, in running this through Sharpner Pro, and it had mix, um, or the print sharpener side of it, I have generated much better, and it's noticeable even with, my, with these glasses on, I have generated much better looking contrast. Now, let's just try and hold this so you can actually see. This is, this is one of the problems of videos, is that it's almost impossible to show um, subtle differences in print on there. But that's now a version I'm quite happy with. If you were to put this at one end of the room and the other one at the other end of the room and ask people to look at two of them, I suspect not that many people would notice much of a difference. But when I look at this, I can now see the impression of a lot more detail in this. And that's purely because of the micro contrast has been increased so that these scree slopes here um, this, uh, these are shales, if I remember right. It's the Mancos shale, that particular one, if I remember rightly. So I used to be a geologist. Um, you can see structure in the shale banding here. You can see more detail in the trees. Now, with the nice thing with Nick Sharpner that I use, is that you don't have to apply it to everything. You can use the control points if you want, but I prefer to just do the sharpening on a new layer in Photoshop and so I've sharpened my, the, the, the image, I've got this new layer, and I have effectively turned off that sharpening for all of this area here in the picture. So the whole thing, there is far less sharpening applied in this area here. What does that do? That gives the impression that this has got more detail. So remember too, when you're, pro, when you're sharpening images, don't sharpen the bits that don't need sharpening. Um, it was said once that you needed to sharpen images for um, when you process the raw files and you should process them for printing. And this was t what was you know, an eminently sensible suggestion became sort of raised up to the point of an absolute edict that you had to do this multi-stage sharpening. There was pro uh, raw sharpening and then there was selective. Sh I've long felt that that was over, overly simplified. Where does this image need its sharpening? It needs its sharpening round here, a little bit round here, does not need any sharpening here. It just contributes to the depth. By having more sharpening here, it also contributes to the fact that this is closer than this. Now, it's all nominally in focus, but this is softer than this much as if we were actually looking at it. Now, could I print this bigger? Yeah, um, if I get to, I'm, I'm gonna be doing some more printer testing of some large printers, and I will take this image with me and I'll do an even bigger print, just to see how far we can stretch it before it gets silly. But there you have it, um, you know, a not bad looking print. Um, you know, it's not the greatest of paper, it's a very basic sort of luster paper, nice, nice enough. Um, what would I do with this if I was printing this on a big printer? Well, I'd probably print it on something like, you know, that brighter paper that that big print over there is on. And I, I, th there are lots of subtleties to it. But the general process is make sure your image is good enough to start with. Take care with the raw settings. Don't try and do too much in that. Do a bit of work on that. A little bit of sharpening. Once again, that sharpening. You don't necessarily need to apply that to this area in the background here and take through all those processes like that. So, you know, I can't just give you a sort of, you know, this is how I made this guide step by step because it would be meaningless because there are so many bits where you have to look at the picture and decide what is relevant for the picture. But that's where the practice in printing comes in. So. There you have it. Now, I hope that's been of use. If you've got any questions, please do ask. Happy to answer questions. And um, thanks for watching.